Welcome back to Grade 10 to Lesson 7 on Data Handling. I hope you have your homework in front of you where you had to draw your box and whisker plot for learner B, learner C and learner D. So let's go over the answers from yesterday's example. So you would have found that the minimum value for learner 1 is 1 and these are the calculations for the 5 number summary. Same for learner C, learner D. Now if you didn't get a chance to do it, please ensure that you do. And then you can double check your answer against my answers, which will be uploaded on Google Classroom for you. Your box and whisker plots for each learner would look like this. Okay, so there we go. So there's learner B, there's learner C, and there's learner D. Right, what I'm going to do is we're going to divert from this example. As I said, this is uploaded on Google Classroom, so you can mark your answers later on. My focus today is on explaining what these diagrams represent. So let's put this aside for a little bit and take you to some theory. Now there are three different types of box and whisker diagrams. And you would notice in the exercise given to you, if I can put this next to it, let's see if it makes sense, if you can see it, you would have gotten three different shapes. And according to the answer, learner D's box represents the diagram that I have in front here, if you can see this. Okay. So that's learner D. It looks symmetrical. We'll check if it matches or corresponds with what I'm going to discuss now. So there are different situations when it comes to the box and whisker plot. And remember, this is dispersion and analysis of data representing spread of data around the mean and median. So when you calculate your mean and median, if they are equal, like in example D, your mean is 6 and your median is 6. So there's your mean represented here. And then, sorry, this is your mean is equal to your median, which in learner D, your mean or Q2, there it is here, 6. So in your calculation, in the five number summary calculation for part A of the question, you would have calculated your mean and you would have had an answer of 6 for learner D and your Q2 is 6. So in that case, this is the representation of this type of box and whisker plot. Now, what do you look for in this type of box and whisker plot? If you look at it carefully, the data to the left of the median balances with the data to the right of the median. Okay? Hence, you get a symmetrical, dis symmetric dispersion. And we say this is representing a normal distribution. If you go back... To a histogram, this is what a normal distribution looks like if you construct a histogram. This little curve here is representing a frequency polygon, but you don't have to worry about that. Focus on the bars and the histogram. So if you see a histogram like that, and if you actually draw a histogram for that data set, this is what your histogram would look like. Where this is your middlemost, your median is equal to your mean, is equal to your mode, and that this is the y that you get. Okay. Type 2 would look like this. Now, we say this is a positively skewed box and whisker plot. Now, this definition or this classification can become confusion, confusing to some learners. Now, if you think about it, the focus is on the spread of data. Spread how scattered, how dispersed the data values are in a data set. When you calculated your mean for your learner A, B, and C, sorry, A was done in with you, B, C, and D, you would have found that learner C's box and whisker plot corresponds with this diagram. So let's put learner C up here, if you can see learner C. Okay, here's learner C.
Tennessee, Tennessee. Okay, looks similar. Now with learner C, what you found was your mean was less, was greater than your median. Okay, and that is the scenario for this type of box. If you calculate your mean, it would be greater than your median. Now, this represents skewed dispersion to the right. Skewed, it is positively skewed. Now, what does that actually mean? There are fewer values on the right-hand side. Remember, your median represents 50% of the data. So if you think about it, from here to here, it is quite spread out. So it's skewed, it's pulled. This whisker pulls the data to the right-hand side. Hence, we say it is positively skewed. The mass, so this little section here, is representing that the mass of the data values are on the left-hand side. And if you think about it, there. And if you look at the length of the whisker, that's a longer whisker than that. So you can think about it like that as well. I'll talk about this in terms of values just now when we go back to the example. The median is normally on the left-hand side, and the mode will be closer to the left-hand side if you get a situation like this, positively skewed. And the third type of box in this plot is a negatively skewed box in this plot. And the negatively skewed one was represented with learner B when you drew the diagram for learner B. So it's the opposite of what a positively skewed box and whisker plot is. And if you think about it, your mean will be less than your median. So that's how you can identify the type of box by your calculation. Again, skewed dispersion to the left, which means the whisker is pulling it. Now, if you look at this specific diagram, although the whisker looks longer on the right-hand side, if you look at it from the median to the minimum value, the spread is greater on the left. So that pulls it to the left. Therefore, there are fewer lower values on the left. Fewer lower values on the left, and this section is more the dense section, and that 50% is higher. So the mass of the values are on the right, and there are fewer values on the left, which means fewer values are below 50%, more values are above 50%. The median is to the right, and the mode will be closer to the right. This is what a histogram looks like for a negatively skewed box in whisker plot. Negatively skewed, lower values on your left, that is that. And I'm going to show you, this is the positively skewed. So if you compare the two, negatively skewed, positively skewed. Okay, and remember, let's go back, there's the normal distribution. Now all of these notes are uploaded for you, so don't worry about taking down notes. Now let's take all the theory and apply it to this question. So I'm going to go through each box and whisker plot in relation to what I just told you about the definitions and how would you identify whether they're positively skewed or negatively skewed. So let's look at learner B. Okay, first thing you look at is your mean. So let's just relist re the values here. Remember x bar. Your mean for learner B was calculated up here and that is 7,3. Okay, your Q2, so we are comparing your mean and your median. Your Q2 for learner B is 8. Okay, so your mean is less than your median. Okay? When your mean is less than your median, that automatically means that this box is negatively skewed. Now, what does that actually mean? Again, let's look at the the value which was the minimum value here to the 50% range. Okay, so we do know this is your 50% mark because Q2 represents 50% of the data. Now let's think about this. If we work out the range from the minimum to Q2, your range is 8 minus 1. Remember, A, 8 minus 1, your highest minus lowest. So your range of the data on the left hand side of Q2 
is 8 minus 1, which is 7. That's a big range, which shows you, if you go back to the definitions and what range represents, the smaller the value, the closer your scores are. The larger the range value, the more dispersed they are. So this tells you that the spread of data is greater on the left-hand side. Now, if you look at your range on the right-hand side, from this section to that, your highest minus your lowest, your range is 10 minus 8, and that is equal to 2. So immediately you can see this is a lower range as opposed to that section. So by just those values, I can immediately tell you that this box and whisker is negatively skewed. What does negatively skewed mean? The data values are more spread out on the left-hand side. So this minimum value pulls the data, hence causing that big range. This section is more dense, so the bulk of the values are on that side. Okay. Let's go to learn a C. So that's learn a B. So learn a B is negatively skewed. So if we have to ask you a question, and the question that can be asked is discuss the performance of each learner by looking at the distribution of scores in terms of the spread about the mean and median. And that's exactly what I'm doing right now. I'm discussing the distribution and what it actually means in terms of the spread of data. So if we right, so let's look at learner C. So let's start by summarizing here. Learner C, your median, sorry, your mean is 4.7. Your Q2 as worked out for learner C is 4. Right, so straight away you can see your mean is greater than your median. So your mean is greater than your median. Therefore, this data set is positively skewed. Now let's explain what does that mean physically if you look at the data set or the box and whisker representation. Again, a, a good way to, to indicate this is to look at the range of data on either side of Q2. So this whisker is pulling the data set to the right. So this section here is more spread out as opposed to that section. So if you look at your range for the second half of the data, remember this is the 50% mark. 10 minus 4, your range is 10 minus 4, which is 6. As opposed to the first half, which is 4 minus 1, your range is 4 minus 1, which is 3. So that's a lower range, which means this is less spread out than that section. Hence, data is pulled to the right-hand side, and it's therefore represented as being positively skewed. Right, then let's look at the third one. And this is how you would interpret a box and whisker, grade tens. If ever they ask you, comment on the distribution. You have to talk about your mean, you've got to talk about your median, you've got to talk about the relationship between the two values, and then you need to identify if it's a normal distribution, a positively skewed distribution, or a negatively skewed distribution. And your reasons are, are listed for you in the notes that I prepared. Now let's look at learner D. Learner D, your mean is 6. Your median is 6. So when your mean is equal to your median, that means it's normal. Not that those are abnormal, but we say these are not normally distributed. This is normally distributed. And that's it for this. The data set or the data values on either side of the median are balanced. So there's no pull to the right or to the left. It is symmetrical. Okay? So we can say it's symmetrical. Now, how do these explanations or descriptions of the box and whisker plot help us 
in determining which learner performed the best. So who was the best performer and who was the worst performer? And if we go back to the example we worked with yesterday, let me just get that out quickly for you, just to refresh your memory on the scores. So yesterday's lesson for his example, this was yesterday's lesson. So by looking at this, by doing the analysis, by looking at the spread of data around the mean, which of the four learners would be the best performer and the worst performer? And it's basically done for you. All you have to do is look at your box and whisker plot and your calculation. So if you think about it immediately, start by looking at your average or your mean as you know it. The lowest mean is learner C. Now, it doesn't mean, it doesn't necessarily mean that learner C is the worst performer. But if we interpret the information, so let's look at learner C because that's what it, it looks like learner C would be the worst performer. So 50%, if we, if we summarize the information, 50% of the data values are below 40%. Okay, and remember this is more spread out. So you have fewer higher values, but you have more values that are less than 40%. So 50% of the values are lower than 4, which is 40%. Okay? The mean is 4,7. So let's compare it to the rest. This is an equal distribution. So again, 50% of the values are above 60 or below 60. So this is an even. So this can't be the worst performer. Let's look at learner B. Now, if you look at learner B, learner B has a, a high mean. Their average is, sorry, a high median, which is 8, which represents 80%. And their mean is 7,3, which is just above 70%. So what does this mean? This means here, the 50% mark, 50% of the marks, for this learner, 50% of the marks lie above 80%. Because it's negatively skewed, it's more spread out here, so you have fewer values on the left-hand side. That's what this means. Fewer values on the left-hand side. And more values densed, condensed in this section, in the upper section. So 50% of the marks are above 80. That's a quite a high set of scores and the average is 7,3. Now the other one we need to compare was learner A. So at the moment it seems that learner B is the best performer. But let's go back to learner A and let's identify learner A. So learner A, where's my little box? Okay, we don't need the box. If you just look at the scores here, Q2 is 8. Okay, so it shares the same average as learner B. However, if you think about it, okay, there's the box. There's learner A. This was learner A. Eighty percent and above. Now this, the values are more spread out on the left hand side, so they have more values that are less than eighty, as opposed to what learner B has. This is saying fewer values. Okay, so if you think about it, it's more spread out. Now let's look at learner A again. The average for learner A is a, was learner A average? 6,1. So at the moment, learner A has, and learner B share the same median, but learner B has a higher average. So learner B is definitely the best performer. Okay, so we write it out here, therefore, learner B is the best performer, and learner C is the worst. Now, I know I've given you a whole lot of information here. I'd like you to go over all the examples, all the summaries, all the notes, 
try and consolidate the concepts about the box and whisker plot. And after that, attempt the exercises that's outlined in the work schedule. If there are any questions, please email me and I'll re-explain the concepts to you if you need to. Uh, otherwise, I'm hoping that you're not hearing Instagram instead of histogram. You've been sitting in statistics class for over a week now and uh, lots of data handling concepts coming up. So tomorrow will be your last lesson on statistics. We have reached the end of it and tomorrow's lesson and work schedule indicates that it's a consolidation lesson. I've given you a whole lot of exercises. I've uploaded challenges for the learners who would like to extend themselves. I've also asked you to do the check your skills and the extension exercises. So please do everything. Use Friday to catch up on all your work regarding data handling. Use the weekend to consolidate. And please, again, email if you have any questions. And this is the end of data handling. I hope you have a thorough understanding of the concepts. And all the best. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next week with something new.